Oh, yeah. We got a great giveaway for you today. One of you is going to win the Businessman Bundle. This is a bundle of workout programs, including MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and MAPS Anywhere. So you get all of those for free. Here's what you got to do. Leave a comment below. If it's one of the first comments in the first 24 hours, and we like your comment, if we pick your comment, you'll get access to all of those for free. Now, everybody else, you can actually get the Businessman Bundle right now for 50 percent off. So we're taking it. By the way, bundles are already discounted. So it's already something like 30% off, taking additional 50% off. All you got to do is go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code uh, business50, business50 without a space for that discount. Also subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. The notifications part is real important. So you know, when we drop these episodes and you can enter to win free stuff. And also if you win, you'll get notified because what we do is we take the winners and underneath their comment, we notify them. If you don't have your notifications turned on, you have no idea. You have no idea that you won, you idiot. So make sure you do those two things. Um, and uh, that's it. Enjoy this podcast. I'm excited about the episode today. So Every month, our our marketing team uh, will will send us a message that hey, we, we would like you guys to um, talk about this specific topic. We let them do that one time. That's all that we let them drive. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we trust them to drive, right? And so, you know, last month that we did the uh, with the responders, right? Was last month? Was that last month's? You know, and the month before that, I can't remember what we did. But every month we do something different. And the one that they uh, uh, sent to us uh, this this month, I was really excited about because I really feel like this was the bulk of my clientele. I've shared on the podcast mm -hmm. before that, um, you know, I, the client that I was most attracted to training was the like high performing, you know, CEO, VP, you know, type A personality kind of go on the go. Jet setter. Yeah. Right. Uh, traveling a lot mm -hmm. on the move um, type of client. And so I really, really am excited to talk about this one today because, again, I feel like we haven't really addressed this specific client, but yet I think I trained a lot. Yeah, of we. I mean, all of us uh, kind of yeah came into this, this was field. My yeah, yeah, all of us came into this field in uh, Silicon Valley, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I started training in the late '90s, and that's when Silicon Valley was starting to really take off, and a lot of my clients um, traveled quite a bit. I would say a good chunk, if not half of my clients were, would travel many times a year. You know, some of them, um, every other month they would be out of the, at a country or out of town mm -hmm. and training people like that was a, it was a totally different challenge, right? It's one thing to train somebody who is in the same place all the time and they can come to the gym and they can create their routine and work out. It's a completely different thing to try to be consistent with your workouts when you're in a hotel you know, yeah. six times out of the year or whatever for a, for a whole week. There's, you know, time changes. There's hotel food. Limitations and workout equipment. There's just a lot of other factors there to consider that, uh, you know, it, you'd have to overcome a lot of these things. And so to, to be able to have that ready and prepared to give them at, before they left was like everything. Yeah. Now, once I figured out how to do this and how to keep people consistent, because what you do is you just look at the problem and say, okay, what can we do and how can we make this as effective as possible? Once we kind of figured it out, I remember when this happened for the first time, I, I had a, a gentleman that I trained that traveled a lot and he was fit in his youth. He was a, a boxer in his youth, but then when he became older, he just stopped working out. Uh, he had a very successful business and he hired me and he says, look, my health isn't that good. I'm starting to feel like some pains and I just want to be fit. He goes, but the problem is I travel all the time. He goes, I'm gone for a week out of every month. And that's the challenge. Is there a way that I can stay consistent with workouts when I'm in hotels that oftentimes don't have gyms? Or if they do, they'll have like treadmills and like a couple machines. Like there's not much stuff. And so I did. I created a, a way for him to train and, and workouts. And I remember the first comment he came, he, he gave me after doing this for a little while was how much better he was at his job, so, uh, uh, at his career, right? Oftentimes, uh, a big part of his job was to do presentations where he talked to other executives and he's selling them his products and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember he came to me, this was like a few months into training. And he goes, you know, I hired you for, for fat loss and for fitness. He goes, but here's why I'm going to stay with you. And he did. He ended up training with me for many, many years. Yeah. He goes, here's why I'm going to stay with you. He goes, I'm better in meetings. He goes, I'm closing more deals. I have more energy. 
He goes, I'm better at my presentations. He goes, that's why I'm going to keep doing this. Well, it's interesting. If you ever have seen any of these motivational speakers that like get these seminars and a lot of people go to these events and things, like one of the big things that they do is they get people to move and mm -hmm. they get people to in these positions, these power positions, uh, where it just naturally promotes a lot more confidence, a lot more energy. And uh, if you do a workout that's effective like that and it charges you and you bring that with you into a, a meeting that's crucial you're going to perform a lot better. Well, that makes me think of like what I what I would say is the the number one challenge with this client, right? Is just consistency, totally. right? If they're they're always flying, uh, you know, in and out of town, and so you know, breaking up that that routine that they were in when they were in town with you always presented a challenge. But if I could just keep them moving and doing something productive as far as like towards their fitness goal while they were in a hotel gym or even in a hotel room where they didn't have any equipment, mm -hmm. I knew that was the first major hurdle. Like, And that took me a minute to piece this together because originally – I was like, oh, you know, could you find a gym? Yep. We, would, we would research like, mm -hmm. you know, a gym that's five miles away and then trying to get them to commit to go pay a day pass and then stay on your program, mm -hmm. stay on what we were we were following. And I failed a lot. I failed at that because what would happen is they would, okay, well, I can't do it right away. I'll wait till my big yeah. my presentation or whatever. Then the day just gets away from them yeah, so fast. Right. Tired. Oh, I don't feel like doing it. And then it's just like, oh, my God, now I got to drive all the way over there to do that. Oh, I'm like, forget it. And so... I, at the beginning, I, I I wasn't very successful with this client, um, but later on realized the importance of just keeping them active, and I needed to learn to modify my program for their lifestyle. Had way more success. Yeah, because the, the, here's the two challenges I had. One was like what you said. I'd give they'd have a routine that we're doing, and then we'd be like, let's find a gym near your hotel. Never worked. It would almost never work at keeping them consistent. So that was a problem. Then the second one was okay, just move. Like just okay while you're gone. Just do something every single morning. Well, that didn't work either because there was no structure and there was no program. There was no programming. And we talk about this on the show all the time, the importance of, of course, there's benefit to just moving, mm -hmm. but there's way more benefit when it's structured and designed in a way for a specific goal, which is called workout programming. This is what you do as a personal trainer, uh, among other things, is you understand how to create successful workout programs that give people... Uh, a lot of bang for their buck because if you only have 30 minutes in your hotel room, we want to make it effective, not just jumping jacks for 30 minutes or just running around the block, but rather mm -hmm. something that's effective. And we know, we know that the most effective form of exercise uh, on a time for time basis in terms of adaptations, right? In terms of getting the body to change in a way to where you get these kind of more permanent results, where your metabolism speeds up, where your body's burning more calories, where you build muscle, which muscle is more permanent than other you know, adaptations, is let's create a resistance training routine that you could do in your hotel room. But then there was another piece, and the other piece is, this is a very important piece, especially to my people who were traveling frequently, is when they were in town, we would ramp up the volume and the training, right? So they would do more training when they were in town, mm -hmm. and then less training without equipment, but still structured very effectively when they were out of town. And to my surprise, these clients, uh, if the ones that were consistent, did just as well as the clients that were seeing me in the gym all the time. And in some cases, actually did better and to the point where I actually started incorporating some of these things into my other clients' routines as well. Well, I mean, that reminds me of that study that I think it was Lane who shared that. I brought it up on the podcast. Yeah. Um, and I, and, you know, I figured this out, but I, I actually didn't even know of this study. I didn't know that some, they actually studied this, but I, I came to the same, similar conclusion as you did, Sal, of like they could dramatically reduce their volume during that week of travel or weekend that they were gone. And I would see just as much progress, if not more, with that client. And it was kind of baffling. Like, what wow, doesn't make sense. They're not training as much volume, but yet I, they seem to be getting at, having the same progress or more than my other clients. And then I know that study came out to show that they did that where they compared people that went three weeks on and then took a whole week off, three weeks on, whole week off versus somebody who never stopped. And actually the clients that took the week off. They all did the very similar. similar. Right. It wasn't even a difference. Right. And so I've taken this approach too, where I tell a client like, oh, don't worry about it. Now, the problem with that was oh, I know. if I tell them when they're traveling and do something like that, yeah. this- it's you open up a can of worms with Well, that. it's also one of the more challenging times to eat well, right? Mm -hmm. And make good choices. So you, it's kind of like this, this two-pronged, you know, you know, that challenge that we have 
is not only is it you know hard for them because they're on the go, probably sleep is off a little bit, but then in addition to that, they're not eating very well, and then also giving them the whole week and saying, ah, oh, don't worry about your workout, your body needs the rest for the week, they would end up coming back where they put weight on. So all I needed to do was create something for them that they would keep them on their kind of their routine and consistency. Mm -hmm. But I didn't need to worry so much about, well, I was doing all this volume last week with Adam in the gym. That's okay. You'll you'll do fine as far as your progress. Yeah, and studies actually show that. Uh, they show that when people stop, that they lose momentum and then it's harder for them to start up again. Yeah. You, you know, they do this with medications, you know, with like the classical uh, birth control pills that women have to take every single day. And they used to give women like a week off. But what they would do is they would still take a pill every day on that week off. It was just a placebo pill. And it was so that women didn't forget that they were on to continue taking the pill. Mm -hmm. Well, this is true with exercise. What you find is that when people take it off completely, getting going again is tends to be very uh, challenging. Yeah, so, so you just take some of the demanding components of it out. And so that way it gives them more flexibility when they're gone and they don't have access to all the same things. And, you, you know, it seems... Uh, so daunting a lot of times that they'll, they'll just decide not to do anything at all. And so to be able to just do something to to maintain that signal and to maintain your body's function of going through those disciplines is is definitely a lot more effective. Yeah. So the first step is really, okay, uh, you travel a lot. Uh, let's look at, first, let's start with the workouts that you're doing when you're not traveling. Okay. How do we make those as effective as possible, considering the fact that you're going to travel you know, uh, frequently or you're, you have travel coming up? Well, the first thing is to make it more of a high volume, high frequency based workout, right? So uh, a full body routine where you're doing kind of, you know, three days a week of hitting the, all the muscle groups. And then on the days in between, very much uh, like MAPS aesthetic, you're doing these focus sessions where you're adding extra volume on the areas of your body that need extra work, right? So uh, to be a little bit more specific, you would do, let's say, a full body workout Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But then let's say you're somebody that wants special emphasis on your glutes and your hamstrings. Well, then on you're, you're working those on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays and maybe even Saturdays, you're doing a little extra glute and hamstring work. And you're picking exercises that are not as intense. Of course, when you're doing high frequency and high volume, you have to modify the intensity. So the harder workouts are on the full body days. On those more focused session type days, it's a little bit less intensity. This is when I like to have people use machines. I like to have them use cables. I like to have them focus on the squeeze and the pump. And this does, it sets you up beautifully, right? If you did this for a few, for three or four weeks, then the next week when you did maybe lower volume, lower frequency type workouts without equipment, you actually come back and you're stronger with better progress. Well, and this is where like I actually stopped even getting them to use the hotel gyms because they were so different, right? Like mm -hmm. what they offered and I just you know what? I'm going to ride cardio based typically. Right. And you know, and you never know. Some of them go up to 50 pounds dumbbells, some of them just have dumbbells, some of them have machines and dumbbells mm -hmm. like so I I stopped even worrying about trying to figure that out totally. for, and and just said what I'm going to do is write you a a body weight type of routine for you in your room and then it's easier too for them not to make an excuse not to get it they ain't gotta go down to another yeah, floor right. they don't gotta go down the street to a, a gym they could literally do it in there and i know that if i'm training like sal was saying when they're back at home with me we're hitting a, a, a high volume high frequency type of a program that it's going to do the body good for them to take off this week of hitting that much that much volume and frequency and let's just focus on just some body weight exercises inside inside your room. Yeah, so I used to do I, I like body weight and bands or body weight bands and tension are mm -hmm. the things that I would employ. Now, yeah. you can get very creative with just body weight even if you're really really strong, right? So like one way to do this would be to manipulate tension, right? Mm -hmm. So I can pause a lunge for example, just to be a simple example mid rep and I can create tremendous tension in my body and hold that position doing a static, uh, you know, isometric type contraction and I can make it quite intense and studies will show that the benefits from this uh, are pretty close to what you'll get with weights, especially, especially if it's novel, meaning especially if this is how you work out only when you travel. This is what makes it so effective, right? Yeah. It's different and it's only when you travel. So you got your body weight exercises, you have your bands, 
maybe like a stick. I used to tell my clients to get the, mm-hmm. the, the out of the closet hotel. They'd use a, a stick that they could use for tension or the wall. Right. And then we would do exercise, very similar, like just like what we do in Maps Anywhere. In fact, when mm-hmm. we created Maps Anywhere, I know we all designed it. Like It's our, funny because that's exactly what I had in mind when we were going through like designing a Maps Anywhere is that that whole, um, basically where you rack your, your coats and everything in the yes. closet and you just pull that dowel bar out. And that uh, was very effective to then direct people a lot of times into positions where then they can apply uh, this muscular tension uh, from some of these unique exercises that provide novel stimulus. This novel stimulus is such an effective way uh, to basically like interrupt whatever you're doing. So then your body has to respond to something new. You bring that back to you and, you know, it translates well to, to the rest of the work. Well, this is how I always imagine, you know, maps anywhere being used or how I have always used body weight training. Like, I've never actually done a full body weight training program for, you know, extended period of time. I just like I've never done a full hit program for an extended period of right. time. Yep. These way this this way of training, I think it just it makes sense to me that this is where you use it when it makes the most sense as far as I am limited. I can't get to the gym. I'm on the road. I'm in my hotel room. Oh, you know what? I never do body weight training. I'm going to do body weight training for this week while I'm on vacation. And you're going to get tremendous benefit because it's novel and you never do it. Versus if I was training full body at home and then I continue mm-hmm. my full body routine while I'm on vacation, sure, I, I, I may not lose any of my gains that I had before I left, but I'm probably not going to make very many gains. But you actually will see gains when you take somebody who is used to doing a traditional full body barbell, dumbbell type of routine all the time at home. And then they go on a trip and now all of a sudden you're hitting them with bands, isometrics, and you're doing stuff like body weight exercises. Now their body goes, holy shit, mm-hmm. this is brand new. And actually they'll come back with gains, which is insane. It is. And, and, and another thing is I like daily workouts. Uh, I don't like long, uh, infrequent workouts. I like shorter daily workouts when travel. So I would tell my clients, do this. It's going to take you about 30 minutes. You're going to do this every single day. Mm -hmm. Here's your workout for Monday, Tuesday. And what I would do is I would have these two more intense workouts, but for the rest of the week, it was more of this body weight control tension. So to give you an example, it'd be like uh, doing a push-up, right? Like a traditional push-up is just up and down. Well, I would do something like I'd tell the person to extend, grip the floor, twist their arms, so they're creating mm-hmm. tension in the floor, to go down really, really slow, pause at the middle, create tension in their back and their chest, go all the way down, do the same thing, and then repeat on the way up. And it would, it would you do like five reps of that, and right. you get like a tremendous benefit from doing so. It's very intense. You're putting more emphasis on squeezing your muscles harder, and really connecting yes. to that. And also, yeah, that tempo is such a, an effective way to, to intensify exercises. And we We've talked about this quite a bit in terms of like ways that you can like variable ways that you can add, you know, uh, you know, intensifiers in there. And so to, to be able to then, you know, mess with that a bit uh, doing body weight, because that was always a concern from a lot of my clients was I do body weight exercises, but it's not really that difficult. I don't yeah. really know if it's doing a whole lot. Uh, you know, there's techniques like that that can make it really difficult and challenging. You just have to be able to have the right planning ahead of yeah, time. Yeah, do some tension moves with a, with a stick where you're creating intrinsic tension and then come back and tell me that it's not uh, intense. Like, oh, yeah. good luck. You're activating lots of muscle fibers. Uh, oftentimes, you're teaching your body to activate more muscle fibers when you do your traditional resistance training workout. That's what the value. And by the way, this is old school lifters used to do this all the time. For some reason, it fell out of favor. But studies, there's lots of studies on this to show that it's a tremendous way to improve strength and build muscle, especially when you add it to a traditional routine. Well, we could talk all day about the the benefits of this, as far as like uh, you know the, the tension and building muscle, but. Honestly, the thing that I found the most value in, in in training this way was is is the behavioral side. Is that it's short. It's twenty to thirty minutes. Is all I'm asking you to do. You don't have to go anywhere. It's designed for you to do it inside your hotel room. Mm-hmm. Right. What I had just found from that was that yeah, there's all kinds of great. It's novel, and they never train these things. And so wait, we might actually build muscle. Like it wasn't even about selling my client on that. It's like listen, this is to me. It's like it's the least resistance to get yeah. them to like. It's yeah. the least I've path. cut through all of your objections. Exactly. That's what, that's what I found the most value was yeah. just that. Is just like if I made it something as short as twenty to thirty minutes, 
and it was different than what they were doing at home when they were with mm-hmm. me. And I encouraged them to do something every single day, but for that short window, it was like it was very easy to get them to commit. Like, oh, so I'll just get up 20 minutes earlier and, and do my routine or, you know, between my, my lunch break, I can do that. Like there's no excuse then. And it was really easy to get my client to commit to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of behavior, another reason why I like the kind of daily workouts is in studies confirm this when people exercise, uh, more often than not, they're more likely to choose meals that are a little healthier. In fact, one of the easiest ways, by the way, kind of one of the most the easiest, most indirect, sneaky ways of getting someone to watch their diet is to have them start exercising. You naturally, because you're in that mindset of working out and bettering mm-hmm. your body, so you start to work out and then you kind of naturally go, you know, I'm going to eat a little bit better, a little bit healthier, P- especially for people who already work out. If you already work out and then you stop working out, you'll naturally find yourself trying to eat worse than you normally do because they tend to go hand in hand. Right. I mean, you're you're working on making yourself feel better. And I think too, like like there are foods out there, you know, when you pay attention to when you eat them, like I feel better when I eat this. I feel better when I'm more hydrated. Mm-hmm. I feel better. Like that 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 feeling is something that you start paying attention to more when, you, when you're adding more movement and more exercise uh, in your routine. So I also had a lot of success with this, with these types of clients also, when I would use that time that they're on vacation to address kind of the tedious work I knew they needed to do, right? Every client that you get, first thing you do is you assess them, you, you check their posture and their mechanics, and you see where all the breakdown is. We all have it, right? And I have this, this list of things that I know they need to address, the forward shoulders, the, the lack of ankle mobility, the, the asymmetrical shift. And it's like, and I know that they need to be doing all these little, you know, priming type movements mm-hmm. and stretches they should be doing and specific like, you know, exercises to help combat all those deviations and trying to get them to do that when they're home and they're training and they're lifting heavy and they're hitting all this high volume stuff was always a challenge. And so I found starting to incorporate that when they are traveling. So it gave them something to focus on. I knew that them not training I later on figured out that them not training that high volume wasn't going to hurt their gains and results. So they would maintain their gains or possibly get more because I had them doing something different. But then I would also incorporate all this posture stuff that, like we did in like Prime, in this in this time. Yeah. Now, of course, now for people who don't know, priming is a way to get your body to move differently. So it's like it's like a warm up, but it's not. It's much more effective. You're getting into certain positions, activating muscles, increasing range of motion and connection uh, to those new ranges of motion. So improves mobility movement, and it alleviates pain. It alleviates pain because oftentimes, especially in modern times, much of our pain comes from poor movement in their chronic forms of pain. It's not an injury, right? So a lot of the time, and this is a big problem with people who travel a lot, back pain, neck pain, Mm -hmm. shoulder pain. Now, why? Oh, they're sitting on the plane for a long time. They're in fixed positions all day. Yeah, sitting in a meeting. Oh, I'm driving over here. You know, I'm on this hotel bed that's different than my bed with a different pillow or whatever. And so I've got neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, whatever. So I would have clients do priming movements, not just before their workouts, of course, but before their meetings, Mm -hmm. before they're going to sit down for a long time, before they get on the plane. You know, I had one guy that I trained that he, in fact, he almost had to figure out a way to conduct his business without traveling. Even though it was a imperative part of his business, he's like, you know, Sally goes, I meet with people in person. It's one of my strengths. He goes, but I, I, I almost hate traveling now because my back hurts so much mm-hmm. from sitting on a plane. He's like, it kills me. And it just, it's almost like I don't want to do it anymore, but I know I have to. So I taught him some, so of course, when I trained him, I did correctional exercise. But then I taught him priming movements to get to do before he gets on the plane and even movements that he could do in his chair on the plane. Yes. Took away his pain and it was like it reinvigorated him with his business. And it was something that I started incorporating with everybody. Was it was pro- interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I ran through that same issue because of all the time on the plane, not just being in that fixed position, but like one of my clients that had knee pain. And so, um, you, you know, just the pressure of being up in altitude and, <laughs> and everything else and being in that fixed position for a long amount of time, you know, really started to aggravate, uh, you know, all these like uh, underlying issues that we were already dealing with. And so to be able to know, you know, I can put my body in this position, I can relieve some pain uh, and and I can keep myself mobile so then I can uh, enjoy the rest of my trip and then also apply these same concepts, you know, at, at the hotel room 
or uh, if I know that I have to walk, you know, all day long the next day, like this is what I'm going to do, like all that stuff, uh, you know, plays uh, a massive role, in, you know, in the in the trip. So I would I would sometimes use this. So we have like maps anywhere is when you're referencing the body weight, the tension, stuff like that. Like that would be uh, some some cases that I would use something very similar to that. Then I had other times where. I would also incorporate like prime, like you're saying, like when we're talking about the plane and sitting down. But then I also had clients too, where I would actually, their whole week would look very prime-esque. Yeah. Because what I found was, okay, if you got all these issues, right, and we're and we're lifting with a lot of volume and frequency during the week, and I, I know you're neglecting to do all the things I'm telling you to do at home because that's just what clients do. And then I got this whole week of you not heavy barbell lifting and dumbbell lifting and kind of a chance for you to recuperate. And then on top of that, I could focus you all around just like posture. That sometimes would be a great week for me to kind of drill that home for the client so they could feel it. So they mm -hmm. could feel the difference. And again, I knew that they weren't going to lose these massive gains in a week by not training, uh, lifting barbells and dumbbells for one week. They could actually do all these movements. And maybe when they came back and saw me, they'd feel much better going into it. And maybe then I could keep them more consistent with doing that before their routine. Yeah, I actually had clients that yeah. would, you know, I'd have them do the prime before their workout. And then we would pick like one movement, one prime movement that's specific uh, specifically beneficial to them, right? So like, for example, a MAPS Prime, you take what's called a compass test and you identify with your specific body what priming movements work well for your body. With, with my clients, I would just do an assessment, right? So I do an assessment and I'd say, okay, for you, because you have really bad forward shoulder and forward head and you tend to have neck tension, here's what I'm going to have you do every single day before you do your meeting. So before you do your meeting, you're going to spend five minutes doing this, you know, now we call it a wall test. Back then, I, I didn't really have a name for it, but it was very similar. And we would do this, and it would, uh, it's like you're doing traction in your spine, just intrinsically because of the way you're positioning yourself. You're working on that kind of shoulder and upper back mobility, the scapular mobility. You're working on the neck. And I'd have them do it for five minutes. Just do it for five minutes before your meetings. And they would always report that they would do so much better in their meeting. And it's true. I tell you, look, if you've ever sat in a meeting and felt not great or a little bit of pain. You're just yeah. not paying attention as well. You're not as effective, especially if you're a salesperson and you're doing sales presentations. Like if you don't feel good, you're not going to be doing as well. If you got forward shoulders and your neck is is forward protruding and everything's sort of going in that direction and you have to consciously look up, <laughs> you know, that's a problem. Like, so to be able to do that and, and to counter a lot of those tendencies, uh, so you're nice and upright, you're alert, uh, your body just responds better to, uh, you, you know, being in that position and, 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 and receiving information. Well, that's why I liked using this week for that too. And just drilling this. Yeah. I mean, you guys, okay. I train one client, right? I have this one client that I train, uh, Chris, she's been with me for a long time. She's this uh, very similar to this avatar we're talking about mm -hmm. right now. She's in fact, she's in Cabo right now for a week. Every month she flies out at, for at least three to five days, every single month minimum. And she's always wanting to keep the routine that I have her on here. And I'm always telling her, I don't want you to do that. And what I've had to drill it down to is I pick two or three movements. I know that it's going to help her with her posture. And she, she's got wrist issues that she's dealing with constantly. She's got hip stuff that she's constantly dealing with. She's got shoulder stuff. And so I, I take two or three of these movements from Prime and I tell her, you, and she, when she looks at me all motivated, because she's very motivated, right? She's in great shape, and she takes. I really met her. Good. I met her several times. Yeah, she's again. in your book, right? Yeah, yeah. She's in. She's in the resistance training revolution, right? So she's one of the models in there. She's in incredible shape, and she's disciplined. So she wants to like you, Adam. Tell me all these things to do in the hotel room, and I'm like, no, ninety ninety your wrist thing. You're, like I give her like three or four things, and just I spend twenty minutes on that. Spend thirty minutes on it. I find that those making them do that for that week. I can get them to feel real progress in that versus when they're home, constantly having the conversation, knowing that they're inconsistent with doing it and them never really, and them going and doing their normal behaviors every single day, working against what I'm trying to combat in the gym versus gym focusing on a few things. No, it's actually a great mental strategy too, because it's like, oh, you're traveling next week. You're going to focus on 
making your shoulder feel better. That's right. So you're not doing your normal workout, but you're going to focus on making your shoulder feel better. It's going to take you 15 to 20 minutes every single day. And then when you come home, we're going to do our normal workout. Your shoulder's going to feel better. You're going to be stronger. That's right. And we'll get better progress. And the people that did it, that were consistent with it, uh, that's exactly what happened. Now, the, the last point, this is probably the most challenging thing, is nutrition when you're traveling. This is mm-hmm. very hard for a fitness, if, even somebody who's consistent with their workouts, this is difficult because you're not at home. You don't have your groceries. You don't have your what you normally eat. You're eating out way more than you normally do. This is something I have challenges with when we travel, right? It's like we're in a hotel room. We don't have a, a, a kitchen. We're not buying groceries. I'm going to be eating, ordering food from restaurants. So I need to figure out ways to help people make better choices when they're eating out because what tends to happen is calories go through the roof Mm -hmm. um, when people are traveling. And they come back and they feel groggy. They don't feel good. Digestion's off. And you're kind of playing catch up for a whole week. So the challenge with this isn't counting calories and counting macros. That's what I used to do, right? So what I used to do is I would tell clients, okay, you're going to travel. Here's what I'm going to have you do. Uh, Here's your your protein, your fat, and your carb uh, goals. Uh, now that you're traveling, just hit those every single day and you'll be fine. What a pain in the ass. Okay, number one, you're going to restaurants and stuff. You got to look it up on your phone. Can I can I see your menu? What are they cooking this with? I have no idea. And then you're like, forget it. I'm off the wagon. I'm just going to go crazy and eat a bunch of whatever. Instead, what I started to do that was far more successful is that, and this is, we talk about this all, all the time on the show, is we started focusing on behaviors, right? We started focusing on eating in ways to make you feel particular ways, making those connections. This is a longer process, but once you do this, when you go on vacation, balance naturally starts to become the way that you eat, even when you're on a trip, even when you eat out. And I would get clients that would say, oh yeah, Monday when I got there, I had you know, the, the, the pizza or whatever. But then, you know, I, I kind of felt like I was a little groggy. And so the next day I, you know, went to a restaurant and I saw that they had steak and vegetables. So I just ate that. And I said, well, why'd you do that? You're on vacation. Why don't you eat more pizza? Well, you know, I'm, I'm listening to my body and it just, it's what I wanted. I actually wanted to eat that way. So it's more of a behavioral approach and there's a lot more that goes into it. We actually talk quite a bit about it in our intuitive nutrition guide. But as you start to work through these behaviors, Nutrition becomes much more of an automatic thing and balance is a natural thing that injects itself into your diet versus trying to hit specific macros and meals when you're traveling, which is almost impossible. Well, yeah, the real the real work is done before. Like this is not this is not one of those things where, you know, someone listening to the show right now, they're like, Hey, I'm traveling next week and I've never followed no, up mind Give me thing. some hacks. Yeah, right. And then and I say, Oh, read the intuitive guide. Like, no, that's not happening. Like it's the real work to prepare yourself for a schedule where you travel all the time is is going to take you weeks and maybe months and maybe even years for some people of of learning how to build a better relationship with food and you you have to do that in order to have that approach otherwise uh you go what what most people do is when they're consistent at home and they're training mm-hmm. they're on a diet they're on a regimen they're restricting they're saying I can't have these things and then they go on vacation or they're traveling and it's like all hell. And then and then when a glass of wine or a slice of pizza comes by, they can't just have one Mm-mm. because the, they, the chains are free. And so they go bananas and they eat tons of that and they drink a ton. And so you as a trainer, as a coach, have to think like, okay, I've got to address these things first before I set my client well, off on how, vacation. How many times yeah. have people actually, without realizing it, actually ruined uh, some some of the time that they have on vacation because mm-hmm. they ate in a way that made them feel terrible? So it's like they, they land on Monday, they go out, and like you said, Adam, they feel like they're that the chains are off, right? So Because it's that mentality, right? It's the wrong mentality. It's like, I'm on a diet, now I'm off, so I'm really off. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, they're like, oh, my stomach was off. I felt so bloated. I've had clients tell me that they didn't want to go to the pool because they felt so bloated from right. eating terror. And I'm like, you just... You're not in. You're on a vacation to enjoy yourself, and you've got this false idea that enjoying yourself means going crazy in one direction. Then what ends up happening is you feel terrible, and you actually don't enjoy yourself. And this is what this is where real balance kicks in, right? So when you work on this and you do this the right way, um, you enjoy some of those foods, but it's not overboard. In fact, going overboard, you recognize actually doesn't feel good. It's actually not something that you really enjoy. You know, this is, uh, I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but this is actually where my whole walking after eating started, 
was actually getting clients and myself to do this when traveling. I knew I was flying. I knew I was sitting down all the time. I'm like, I've got to get steps in and mm -hmm, movement in. Mm -hmm. And so I started to create this habit of when I was traveling that I would, you know, after I eat at a restaurant and out, I would, hey, I have to go for a walk now. I go walk for 20, 30 plus minutes or longer if I could convince Katrina to do that. But really, this is, uh, this is something that I started to bring back home and realize the benefits of it. And so one of the things that I tell clients is just, you got to be mindful of that and the, the choices that you make. Don't tell yourself you can't have it. If you do stuff like that, though, make a conscious effort to go out and just and move. And a walk is that simple. It doesn't need to be this strenuous training session for an hour and a half, but just being conscious of that and making that extra effort to move. Yeah, I have a similar thing with with trying to seek out uh, more fibrous, cruciferous type uh, vegetables, and and that's really a digestive thing for me. Uh, you know, and it, because I know there's a lot of times too. Um, it's very common for people to get constipated and to have, you know, issues when they're traveling. Uh, and then also like a sleep is another big issue. And so like, if my digestion is off, like my sleep gets affected and then now, yeah, I am kind of ruining my trip in, in a sense to where I'm not enjoying it to the fullest. So that's something that I, if I just seek that and then also, you know, whatever's available, uh, at least I have that to kind of help to mitigate some of the damage. Well, and that reminds me of another thing that started with my clients that were traveling was teaching them to eat the the proteins first. Yes. You know, proteins I, and vegetables first. Yeah, yeah, that that's where this came from. I'd get clients to be like, Adam, I'm going to eat out. I'm traveling. I'm on the go and stuff like that. So you, and I don't know where I'm going to be eating out. So I'm here. I'm as a trainer scratching my head. Okay. I don't know where you're going. Like, yeah. what, what am I going to tell you to do? Right. And giving you these specific macros, that's a little ridiculous, but giving them a more general, simple rule that I ended up seeing a tremendous value in was like, okay, I'm just going to tell my client, like, I'm not going to say you can't go to that restaurant. But what I will say is that eat your your protein first go get the meat first finish all that then your greens your veggies and stuff like that and then after that if you still feel you're hungry then you could eat the carb mm -hmm. and what it ended up happening is the clients when you would get full before they even get to the right. carb. it's also slowing down when you eat it's yep. not drinking water while you eat which forces you to chew your food it's being present it's also being aware of satiety right there's a there's a difference between i'm satisfied and i'm full or i'm stuffed and that difference is actually kind of big right oftentimes when we're on vacation because we feel like we're off the wagon we surpass satiety to the point where we feel sick where we just feel like we're super stuffed i mean i remember you know making this transition for myself it actually changed my experiences on my vacation. It used to be when I'd go on vacation, I would just eat a bunch of, all the stuff that I said I couldn't eat when I was at home, right. I would just eat a bunch of garbage. Once I made this transition, what I started to do is I would enjoy the food that I was eating on vacation. If I was eating in another place, if I'm eating in another state and I'm starting to seek out foods that might be specific to that state, or if I'm in another country, I'm going to try different foods. Now I'm actually enjoying the food rather than doing this kind of gluttonous thing where I'm just stuffing my face and making myself, you know, not feel good. You know, there's something else that I used to do with my clients, and this isn't something that we we always recommend to people, but I, I did find value with this with this client, is if they were on vacation or they were traveling like this, uh, and, th and this was the evolution of these apps when they, this became so easy to do this, is like my fitness pal and fat secret. I wouldn't tell them what they couldn't or couldn't have. I would just ask them to log it in that. And I found that by them just logging in and seeing and not telling them what they it's an awareness tool yeah just simply that like i'm not going to tell you you got to follow that diet that we've been following or do anything like that at all just do me a favor when you consume something just throw mm -hmm. throw it in there so i know and i pre, i would present it as a coach is like i just want to see what you're doing so i wouldn't yeah. put it like oh i'm watching to see how many calories you have yeah, yeah, or yeah. shame you for not getting your oh, i literally was like adding a little bit of breaks yeah it, and uh, what i knew was that it would give them those breaks without them even realizing right. that because they're just becoming aware of like oh my god wow i didn't realize that there's awareness, that many calories awareness makes a huge difference like i'll, I'll use myself as an example right i love uh, pasta of course i love pasta i, I grew up on pasta but gluten in particular tends to bother me and it tends to make me feel bloated. It slows down my digestion. I get very sluggish. So because of that awareness, right, when I go on vacation and I'm in, I can see that, oh, they're serving pasta. Ooh, it's going to taste good. But I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't want it. You know, it's not, I can't have it. It's, I don't want it. Why don't I want it? It's not worth it. The taste I have from the pasta is not worth how I'm going to feel. This is part of that process of developing a good relationship with food. Because oftentimes there's many foods 
that make us feel a, in a bad way, but we're not even connected to that. What we're connected to is just the experience of when we're eating it. It's yeah, like the instant feeling. Yeah, it's, oh, it feels so good to eat, but becoming more aware of the effects afterwards can actually get you to the point where you look at a food and you go, yeah, I know that'll taste good, but I actually don't want that food. And again, you start to create this kind of natural uh, balance. So look, this episode, we talk a lot about working out when you travel, about your nutrition when you travel. We actually have a bundle uh, designed for business people. It's actually called the Businessman Bundle, but it's for business people. It's for anybody. In this bundle is included MAPS Aesthetic, which would be your workout at home. It's your high-volume, high-frequency high workout. While you travel, you have MAPS Anywhere, which utilizes bands and your body. Great workout, requires no equipment. We also have MAPS Prime in there. That'll give you the priming movements that we talked about and much more. And then there's the Intuitive Nutrition Guide in there that'll help you develop balance with your diet. It's 50% off. Right now, because of this episode, I know this promotion is going to expire Sunday after this episode drops. You can go to uh, mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code BUSINESS50, BUSINESS50, for that discount. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. See, this is the key. He didn't go out and bench every day heavy. He went out and practiced very often, and he benched heavy, I don't know, once a week. Mm -hmm. And so I practiced this, and this is the first time in my life that I was able to bench press over 300 pounds. I was stuck forever at whatever it was. Then I started increasing my bench frequency where I was bench pressing three days a 